Facebook is biased against facts and against journalism, and this harms democracy. That's the message from 2021 Nobel Peace Prize joint winner Maria Ressa. An investigative journalist from the Philippines, she has seen firsthand the impact of the gradual erosion of journalistic freedoms in her country. In fact, under President Rodrigo Duterte, the Philippines has fallen further in international press freedom rankings than ever before. You'll hear what Maria Ressa has to say about that in a moment, but first, this report. An attack on independent media, a total war against journalists. This is how the news landscape is described in the Philippines. Since President Rodrigo Duterte was elected in 2016, the country has been sliding down the Press Freedom Index. And she is leading the fight against it. Maria Ressa and her news site Rappler have emerged as key voices against Duterte's regime. The Nobel Committee has recognized that. Ms. Ressa and Rappler have documented how social media is being used to spread fake news, harass opponents and manipulate the public discourse. It's a job not without risk. The Philippines consistently ranks among the top 10 deadliest countries for journalists. Reports say as many as 19 of them have been killed since Duterte took office. Deaths which don't seem to phase the leader. At News of One, he replied, just because you're a journalist, you are not exempted from assassination if you're a son of a Perhaps it's because journalists have played a key role in scrutinizing Duterte's controversial war on drugs, which has reportedly seen some 12,000 people killed at the hands of security forces. Families of the dead are relying on journalists to hold them accountable. Despite the risks and legal challenges brought by the government, the Nobel laureate is optimistic. You know, I, I, sometimes I joke and I say uh, I should really thank President Duterte for a lot of things. He's forced me to define my lines. He's forced me to stick to the idea of my values. He's forced Rappler to be more idealistic, better, faster, um, more mission-driven, and I hope, you know, we come out of it stronger. It's a promise Ressa has kept to so far as she inspires journalists and those fighting for democracy across the world. And I'm joined now by CEO of digital news outlet Rappler.com, an investigative journalist herself, and now joint winner of the Nobel Peace Prize for 2021, Maria Ressa. Maria, firstly, many, many congratulations from everyone here at DW News. It is such a pleasure to be speaking to you today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Now, it's, it's nearly two weeks since you were announced a joint winner. Dare I ask, has life changed for you since then? It's become doubly busy. But I think also the, the other part is there's, it's been an incredible shock of adrenaline and energy for journalists in the Philippines. And uh, the last week or so, I've been talking to journalists in other parts of the world who, I mean, many of them have it worse than we do. So it, it just emphasized how much more difficult it is to do our jobs. And it's something that the Norwegian Nobel Committee also alluded to. In fact, while making the award, it said freedom of expression is a, quote, precondition for democracy and lasting peace. Do you think that most ordinary people in the Philippines where you work would see it that way? I believe so. And, you know, part of what we saw the weekend after was this tremendous outpour. I mean, I felt the love, you know, and it's that that is so rare on social media, given that that is the vector, that is the place where 
Rappler and I and journalists here have been attacked, but it was like a weekend of love. And that reminded me of where, of the good that social media can do. Over the past so many years, and we've talked about this in the past as well, uh, the fact is that many people in your country have seen you as a part of the problem, you know, as someone who's going up against a popular leader, in this case, Rodrigo Duterte, who at least is perceived to be doing good for their country. I wonder, therefore, what do you tell people like that? Why is independent journalism important for them as well? I think this is what the Nobel Committee just highlighted, right? That facts are at the core of any democracy, that freedom of speech, freedom of expression is about being able to say what you think without fear of retribution. Um, and then, you know, I'll, I'll do a, a I'll just spotlight that popularity easily turns into mob rule. But in the age of social media, you can't quite tell whether it's real or manufactured. And do you think social media, therefore, has a very important role to play? And potentially the gatekeepers of social media have a vastly more important role than they acknowledge to play in the proper functioning of democracies? I think that the rollback of democracy globally and the tearing apart of the shared reality has, has been, it's because of tech. It's because news organizations lost our gatekeeping powers to technology and technology took the, the revenues that we used to have, uh, you know, along with, um, they took the powers, but they abdicated responsibility. And I think this is, is a wake-up call. And that's happening not just for journalists with the Nobel, with the Nobel spotlight, but also you are seeing many more sophisticated discussions about what exactly is wrong, that we're moving finally away from content moderation to where we should be, which is algorithmic distribution algorithmic amplification and how it has insidiously manipulated human beings on the platform. You have you have been at Facebook, you have been a part of many panels at Facebook that has looked at just things like these. And I mentioned Facebook because it is very popular in the, in the Philippines. What would you like to see happen with big tech like Facebook? I think the core of the problem is that all the social media platforms treat lies and facts identically. They're data points, right? And, and the research has now shown us that on, on social media, lies laced with anger and hate spread faster and further than facts. So you can say that the world's largest delivery platform of news is actually biased against facts and biased against journalism. And as a result of that fundamental choice that the tech platforms have made, we have cheap armies on social media rolling back democracy in 81 countries around the world. That is from Oxford University's computational propaganda research project. So it's, I think, so here's the other thing that dawned on me that the last time a journalist was given this honor was in 1936. He wasn't able to go accept the honor in person in Oslo because he was in a Nazi concentration camp. He right. languished in, in a Nazi concentration camp. And so I think that's the signal that the Nobel Committee is telling us again that we are kind of at this existential moment where we could lose our rights. We could lose democracy if we lose the facts. Right. Uh, I'd like to sort of switch a bit to talk about the leader of uh, the Philippines. I mean, you are no stranger to facing flack from the government of President Rodrigo Duterte. I wonder, any personal message of congratulations from him? No, none. I mean, <laughs> you know, it took three days. I was actually, I was actually saying that um, that uh, that Russia. That, that President Putin and the Kremlin congratulated Dmitry uh, the same day. And it took maybe three days before the presidential spokesman um, gave a grudging congratulations to the first Filipino, but then turned it around and said, the prize is, uh, is evidence that press freedom is alive and well in the Philippines. 
Yes, in fact, we'd like to sort of play what Harry Roque, the presidential spokesman, said of your Nobel Prize. Of course, he also said at the very outset that it's a, I quote, it's a victory for a Filipina, and we are very happy for that. This is what he went on to say. It is not a slap in the government. It was made by private individuals uh, in um, Norway. We respect their decision, but as I said, Criminal liability of uh, Maria Ressa remains pending in our courts, and we leave it to our courts to decide on her fate. There is no slap there, because as, as everyone knows, no one has ever been censored in the Philippines. Uh, Maria, no one has been uh, censored in the Philippines. How true is that? You see my smile. <laughs> yeah. um, let me put it this way. <laughs> you know, uh, the largest broadcaster in the Philippines is off the air. And the last time that happened was when martial law was declared in 1972. You've had at least 19 journalists killed under this administration. Uh, you have a, a journalist who's 23 years old languishing in prison for more than a year. Um, and, you know, of course, I've had 10 arrest warrants in less than two years. So sometimes all you have to do is smile. We have an um, election coming up uh, uh, next year, Maria, and you talked about that a little earlier. Why should we be concerned about this election? How important is it? Why are these elections important? Because, you know, this is really the battle for facts. You go to this. We've been... In 2016, we, uh, we demanded an end to impunity of Rodrigo Duterte and the drug war and Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. 35 years after the Marcos family was, was tossed out of the Philippines by a people power revolt, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., Bong Bong Marcos, right. uh, now has, is running for president. So, you know, in 2019, Rappler actually exposed the networks of disinformation that had been created to chip away at history, to reorient history. And I can share that. I, I can share the links with you. But, you know, this is going to be a battle for facts. And we're going to have to make sure that facts win. And in order to do that, these American social media platforms are going to have to put guardrails and prioritize facts. Maria Risa, it's also a privilege talking to you. Maria Risa, the joint winner of the Nobel Peace Prize for 2021. Thank you so much for taking time out for us today.